Hello, I'm Jeremy Fry. I am the senior pastor here at Advent Lutheran Church. I want to thank you for taking the time to participate in the following worship recording. Our mission here at Advent is to be the followers of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. For us, that means connecting people to God and connecting people to people. We serve and love our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we go out and we serve and love each other with the same love that God has for us. Everyone who walks through the doors of Advent and participates with us needs to know that they are a child of God, wonderfully and beautifully made in God's image. No matter your race, your gender, your sexual orientation or identity, your social economical status, no matter where you, where you come from and who you are, you are loved by God and you are welcome to come and participate in worship and leadership in any of our ministries. Our ministries happen because of the generosity of our people. If you would like any more information about the ministries here at Advent Lutheran Church, how you would like to get involved, or information on how to give to these ministries, please visit our website, adventbrevard.org. Thank you and God bless. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from that land and went in a boat to a desert place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a desert place and the hour is now late. Send the crown crowds away so that they may go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to his disciples, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. As the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So when I teach confirmation, one of my favorite lessons uh, that we talk about is titled, Do I Have to Believe that Jesus did miracles to be a Christian. Do I have to believe that Jesus did miracles to be a Christian? And the reason we talk about this is because uh, miracles are, are very prominent uh, in our scripture and our gospels about who Jesus is, what Jesus did. In fact, he, he became so known for that right away that he would heal the sick and that he would do these other miracles like walk on water and raise people from the dead and, and you know, give sight to the blind, heal lepers, all this kind of stuff Jesus was known for. So is that why the crowds came to him? Was Jesus truly performing miracles? And we struggle in today's world with that. 
because we see miracles here and there, but they're just not as prevalent as they are in scriptures. And some scholars would even say that, that Jesus really didn't perform miracles. Uh, he just did really good acts and things, and, and people interpreted him that way, and then and it kind of just blew uh, out of proportion, and, and it wasn't actual miracles. And they actually point to this exact miracle in our gospel story. Other tellings of this gospel story in the other gospels, you know, talk about a boy having just a couple of loaves and, and some fish and giving them up and Jesus multiplying them. Now, what the scholars would like to say, some scholars would like to say as well, well, this just proves about Jesus' generosity, especially talking about the small boy, that 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 people in the crowd small, saw this boy give away his only possessions, a few loaves and a few fish, and that the crowds were, were hiding and keeping their own food for themselves. But once they saw the generosity, they decided to share their food as well. And that's how they all got fed. That's for our, our human sinful selves and, and how we think about the world and how, what we know about the world and how the world works. Many of us like that definition. Because if we do say, yes, you have to believe that Jesus did miracles in order to be a Christian, if you, if you have to believe in miracles, the next question is, why don't more miracles happen? Why don't miracles happen to me? I know so many people who are suffering from cancer and other diseases or, or homelessness or depression or, or whatever is ailing them at the time. And people who have prayed over and over and over again for a miracle. And it doesn't happen. What do we do with that? I've also heard stories of people who have had cancer and doctors go to a doctor visit and the doctor says the cancer is completely gone and we have no idea why. It says a miracle has happened. Well, why did that miracle happen to that person and not me or not the loved one that I love and care for? Those are hard questions for us to think about. Because if you go down that road, then you say, well, is this person uh, more worthy or more faithful than me? Is that why? Or is God just up there deciding randomly that, that God is going to uh, save this person or that person, but not this other person? That doesn't sound like an all-loving, all-caring God. It's hard to talk about a God like that to those who don't know who Jesus is, who don't know who God's love is. It seems like a manipulative, mean God who's choosing who gets a miracle or not. And I don't know if you've experienced a miracle in your lives. It's also hard to explain that to others. It's hard to get people to believe that a miracle actually happened again because it's not what we know of this world or we haven't experienced it ourselves. So it's so much easier for us to dismiss it. Because we also don't believe that God is just a God that's up there letting the world do whatever the world does, you know, kind of set it in motion. And whatever happens, happens and doesn't intervene. We believe as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, that our prayers matter. That our faith matters. That it makes a difference in this world. 
but we struggle with the fact of why God doesn't bless us or why God doesn't help us in the way that we want it. Why doesn't God give me that miracle? These are the things that we love to debate about in Scripture. And by the way, I don't give an answer to my confirmation students, and I won't give an answer to you too. You, you have to figure this out for yourself. That's what God does for us. God gives us the Holy Scripture. God gives us uh, Jesus' teachings. God gives us Jesus as a gift of grace and mercy and forgiveness to us. And then we are to struggle with these questions of how to use God's word, how to use God's commands, how to use this gift that Jesus gives us in our everyday life. I always tell people being a Lutheran pastor is the easiest pastor you can be. Because I don't tell you exactly how to interpret scripture. I don't tell you how to raise your kids. I don't tell you how to spend your money. I don't tell you who to vote for. There are plenty of churches out there out there that will do that for you. But as a Lutheran Christian pastor, my job is to preach the gospel and you do the hard work with the help of the Holy Spirit to see what God is speaking to you in your situation, in your family, what God is calling you to do. Whether you want to believe in miracles or not, that's up to you to figure out. Because Jesus will continue to be who Jesus is. God will continue to be who God is. All loving, all caring, all merciful, all forgiving. Jesus died on the cross and rose again. An unbelievable miracle. And that's what we put our hope and faith and trust in whether we believe it or not. But as we debate whether miracles happened or not and how miracles happen and why miracles are happened, that's the stuff that we as Christians love to talk about and debate about and separate us from other Christians that we believe this and, and other things and you believe that and other things and you, you'll go ahead and worship that way and we'll worship this way. That's the stuff we love to talk about and debate about as Christians. In fact, um, as Pastor Alicia gets ready to get ordained uh, t this afternoon, it reminds me of my ordination. And when I got ordained, we just joined with the Episcopal Church to be in full communion, meaning uh, I can serve in, in Episcopal churches and an Episcopal priest can come serve here and all are welcome to communion and all that. So we're full partners in Christ. But the Episcopalians said, listen, uh, we, have, uh, we have paperwork and we have lineages that go back to ordination to Peter, right? The, the disciple Peter. And every pastor and every priest in the Episcopal church has been ordained by somebody who's been ordained, who's been ordained bishops and bishops and bishops all the way back to Peter. It's called the historic episcopate. And the Episcopal Church says, in order for us to be full communion, we need, you need to agree to that. And there was a huge debate about that. Do we believe in that or do we not believe in it? It's hard to prove, right? For centuries and centuries and centuries, you can say you have all the paperwork in the world, but is it truly that way? Ultimately, the ELCA said, sure, we'll do that. And then we had bishops and, and get orda ordained other bishops. And, and eventually, you could opt out of it if you wanted to be a seminary student and not be, not be ordained in that. I mean, it was just a huge thing, and churches laughed over it. My home congregation laughed over that reason. For me, it didn't matter. I wanted to be a Lutheran pastor. So I got ordained as a Lutheran pastor. 
But it amazes me as I look out at the church, the Christian church in America, as I look out about all of us other Lutheran churches out there, you know, us ELCA get along better with other denominations, with, you know, the Methodists and Episcopals and Congregationalists and, and the Baptists and all those others we get along more with than our own brothers and sisters of different Lutheran denominations. We have more in common than than any other denomination, yet we won't play nice together. And we'll debate whether this is appropriate scripture interpretation, whether how we should worship, who we should ordain, how we should be as the church. That's what we love to debate and talk about. And that's what fills our time. And I truly believe that's the best distraction that Satan can give the Christian church. I think the, that Satan laughs at us when we're sitting here debating about this miracle or that miracle or debating whether Jesus did this or that or, or how we should worship or who we should ordain or what's the correct interpretation of Scripture and continuing to debate and debate and fight and argue over that. Because it keeps us from doing what Jesus and God wants us to do. And Josh said it perfectly at the beginning of this service. Jesus makes it quite clear in this reading and throughout his ministry. Jesus gives us command after command after command and gives us example after example after example of how we are to act as Jesus' disciples. How we are to show mercy and empathy and service and love to others. And I love this quote that Jesus says during the feeding of the 5,000. You give them something to eat. He's talking to us. His disciples. We get so distracted about everything else, we forget to do what Jesus calls us to do. To go out to love God to love and serve others, to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to reach out to those who have not heard of God's love, peace, mercy, and forgiveness, to go to those on the outside of society and welcome them in, to be all welcoming, all loving, all caring, sacrificing ourselves for our Lord and Savior, and for our neighbor. That's what Jesus is asking for each and every one of us today. Not that we can't debate and talk about miracles, or what Jesus might have said or not said, or how we should worship. We'll talk about those things, but that shouldn't be our focus. And that definitely shouldn't divide us. If we could take all of our emotion, all of our motivation, all of our passion, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, just focus on a few things that Jesus wants us to do. This world would be a better place. We would be living out God's command for us. And we would be doing it for the glory of God. Jesus is telling us this morning, you, you go. You go and give them something to eat. Amen.
midst of these, the weary and the weak. And it would be a tragedy for me to turn away. Receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's
Serve the Lord. Please be.